Today we're back on the grasshopper motor, Kohler motor. And before I take it apart, I'm gonna blow off all of these joints. Come on. So we've got a torn hose here, and that's for the fuel pump. You can see that that's pretty messed up, so we'll have to get a new one of those. Around the horn, ding, 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 then this comes off. Just make sure that all hardware is the same length. Okay, so far so good. So this is a rolling wedge, or some people call it a lady slipper. And oh, that came up nice. And there's a little bit of a spot up here, but I'm gonna just pry a little here. Okay. Just ease it out of there. Okay. There you have it. Okay. So when we look in here, we see the oil pickup, the oil pump drive gear. There's probably a relief. And then we see the governor. All looks really good. Very nice. So now we're going to get into here. So all we're going to do is undo the connecting rods and we're just going to push the piston out. Then I can look at the piston and I can determine what style that piston is. Because there's a new style and an old style. And it goes by a um, uh, serial number. So let's tip this guy back over again. And then we're just going to undo those bolts there. Those and those. And then we can take the connecting rods apart and pull that piston out of there. Yep, 10 millimeter. Nice. Nice, good. So we'll keep the caps and the bolts with this connecting rod. And then there should be just this little bitty, little bitty thing right here where we can separate that. Boy, that's pretty nice. There we go. And here's a big moment of truth. These go on only one way. Oh my. They look perfect. They really look good. They show some signs of a little bit of wear, but no scoring. That's really, really good. So we're just going to slide this piston up. We should see them here pretty soon. Here he comes. Here he comes. And there it is. And there's your piston. And then we'll pull off, we'll pull off one of the rings and we'll see how good it's gapped. We'll see how the gap is. And that looks perfect. Really, really good. Okay, now let's push this piston up. This is the top ring. It's gonna put it in the bore. And then what we'll do is we'll take the piston, then you take the piston and you can put the piston in there and that will make sure you get it square. And then you can look at the gap. So you can see that gap. That is a pretty big ring gap. So it's looking like the rings on this were war. And I'll get some feeler gauges and we'll see what size it was versus what it should be. 
between 10 thou and 22 thou. So we're gonna go straight with 22. Okay, so it's supposed to be 22 thou. Let's see what we're at right now. So we are at, let's do some math here. 24 plus 23, that's 47. 47, 67, 68, 69. So we're at 69 thou, and we're supposed to be between 10 and 22. So we're 59 thou over. So now what we'll do is we'll mic up this bore, and we'll see what the bore size is. Make sure we don't have a ton of wear on that bore. Our bore then should be 83 millimeter or 3.27. So 3.27, maybe 3.27 and a half. That cylinder is in good shape. Let's rotate this around and quick do a, a shot of the other one. And it's 3.27. So our boards are in good shape. So we just need rings. That's good to go. All right, now I gotta get parts ordered and then get working on that Subaru motor. This is a 1999 engine, and uh, I still have the crank in there, so I'm just gonna turn the crank to a clear spot where I could go in and get that honed in nicely. Oh, nice. That's nice. We just got to take a little bit more of that glazing off and we're going to be in good shape. Yeah. Yep. A little bit more and we'll be in good shape. Now wow, that's cool. All right. And we'll do this side. Turn that. Okay, a little more and we'll have her all done. We'll have all that glazing broken. Pretty good. I'm gonna call that good and then we're gonna head on and put some crank bearings in and start getting that Subaru block back together. And we're using the Little Red Barn Genuine Piston Rings. Here's the pistons, we clean these all up. Clean them all up, now we're just ready to put them piston rings in. These are going to be our two oil rings to support this corrugated scraper ring. Those will go in the bottom and these do not have any little clips or anything so we're going to make sure to keep these two rings we're gonna make sure we keep those two gaps apart. Right, first, we, first we're putting in this. And when you put this in, you just wanna make sure that you don't have it overlapping, it's gotta be like that. 
And this is kind of nice because they have a discolored one. So it makes it just a touch easier to see where that joint is. So I'm going to first put this on. Make sure that it doesn't overlap. Okay, so it has to be. There we go, they're end to end. Alright, now we're just going to work the piston ring on. Just going to start it in the bottom and just slowly work that guy around. Just make sure it's in. Okay, that's one. Okay, and we're still together there. Then we'll bring in the second piston ring, or oil scraper ring. Not even, oil, yeah, oil scraper ring. I guess so we're just going to start them down there on top. But because that that because that gap is right here, we're going to just bring this one and put it over here on this one. No, this one. Okay. Alright, let's just work them around. It's just going to just slowly bring them out of there and bring them down. Yeah. And that's it. Okay, this ring has a shiny group has is shiny compared to this one. And then it also has a little lip. Well it's kind of here we'll show you a picture. It's like this first one. So there's a little ledge on here. So this has got a face down. And we'll just get this guy on there. Put him in there. Okay, get him to the bottom there. We'll just slowly work him through. Work him out of there. This one we're looking for any type of thing to indicate top. This one is actually just a plain ring. So we're just, it doesn't really have a top or a bottom. Just going to put them in there. I'm going to put them opposite of that one. There we go. Perfect. Okay, we're oiling up the bore here. already applied engine assembly lube I'm also going to put some assembly lube on the side here and in there perfect make sure we're pointed that way to the flywheel Okay, we're going to slide this guy down there. Now oh, we're just going to make sure we rotate this engine so that the crank is out of the way. 
Now we're gonna square that up. That looks good. Now we're gonna drive that down. Okay, nice. All right. We'll swing around. You can see we're gonna bring this guy up. Ow, 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 ow. Fingers in the gears. Okay. Let's aim. Yeah, okay. And then we can put on the cap. So we have six millimeter straight bolts. These get 100 inch pounds. And you just tighten each one up back and forth until it gets to your 100 inch pounds. They also have an M8, and then they have an M8 with a, a recessed here. So, but we have the M6, and we're going to 100. Okay. 100 on the inch pound wrench. And 100 inch pounds is not a lot. That's it. Oh. It is beautiful. It's really nice. Spins really free. Let's get the other one set up to go. Really nice and smooth. Okay, let's get that back down so we can tighten them up. Okay. Oh, let's go one more time with a rotate. Oh, really nice. Okay, this is the number two head, and you can see the discoloration here on the exhaust valve. So it looks like that exhaust valve is leaking. Whereas you look at this one, right, this one is pretty clean. So we're gonna just get ready, and we're going to go ahead and we're gonna do a valve job on this.